In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to use the MasonryJS library to create dynamic grid layouts. So MasonryJS is a JavaScript library that you can add into any page and will automatically lay out elements of different sizes, making the most of the available screen space. So to get started, we need to install MasonryJS in our project and on the actual website, there are several different ways that you can do that. The first is to download it from the actual site or you can use a CDN or preferably you can use a package manager to install it as a dependency of your project. So I've set up a simple project and I've added it as part of our dependencies by using the npm install command. And I've also added some images that I want to use in our grid as part of the project. So to get started with masonry, first of all, create an element on your page where the grid is going to be. And then add all of the elements that you want to be part of the grid. So in this case, I'm going to create a div with an image inside it. And we'll need one div for every image we want to load into the grid. So here I've loaded in 16 images and each div item has a class of grid item with a reference to the image inside it. And if we check out what that currently looks like in our page, you can see all of the images appear, but they're stacked all on top of each other because currently each div element is acting just as a div element, which is a block level element. So we need to activate the masonry library to actually turn this into a grid. So we can simply do that in our JavaScript by first of all, importing the masonry library. And then once the contents of the window is loaded, we'll get a reference to the containing grid element, which I simply gave a class of grid to. And then we can create a new masonry object, passing in the grid element as the first parameter. So now if we return back to our page, we can see the elements are now stacked side by side and resizing the page should allow masonry to resize our grid for us too. So some of the things that you can do with masonry, we might want to resize the size of the grid and the images that are being displayed inside it. And we can do that by passing in some options to the masonry constructor. And the first thing we can do is let masonry know what the item selector is for the items that are inside our grid. So by doing this, masonry can understand what items are inside its grid. And if we add a bit of styling to the grid item class, for example, by setting a specific width for each of those items, if we then go back to our page, you can see the items have been resized to a more manageable size. So we might want to add a little bit of padding around these elements, which we can do with CSS, but there is a masonry option for putting a gutter between each of the columns, which helps to add a little bit of white space and separate all of our elements inside of our grid. And if our containing grid elements are using percentage widths for their style, you can see our images inside the grid actually scale to the size of the page that we're on. There are also a few options to set the origin of where the elements start. For example, if we wanted to align the images to the right hand side of the containing grid element. And also if we want to align the elements to the bottom of the container, we can set origin top to false too. That's how you go about setting up a basic fluid grid with Masonry JS. There are some other options that you can see in the documentation, and you can also manually call some of the methods from Masonry if you need to. For example, if you want a fourth reload of the Masonry layout, and there are also some events that you can listen out for, for example, when the layout has completed. So you could use these to run a custom function or do some other kind of interaction with the user every time an event in masonry is triggered, such as the layer complete event. So now you've got an overview of how the masonry library works. You can now include it in your projects if you have a need for creating this kind of fluid grid layout.